10, 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so this session provides an introduction to the summit and an overview of what's happened in CC and the open community in the last three years. That sounds impossible. Actually, it's been 37.5 months since we were together in Singapore. Oh, by the way, the answer to where are we is on this map. This is where we were in Singapore. Uh, a lot of people realize that one of the changes that's happened with Creative Commons headquarters is that we moved. This is a map of the San Francisco Bay Area. We were in San Francisco, now we're about 60 kilometers to the south in Mountain View in Silicon Valley. I, there have been a lot of staff changes over the last three years, of course. I don't think it makes sense to call any of them out. But almost all of our staff is here. Many of them are outside doing jobs. But I'd like to ask any uh, headquarter staff who are here to stand up so that we'll know who to talk to. And you, everybody has name tags in. Oh, OK. Every staff has lanyards, so instead of staff t-shirts. So make sure you make sure you talk to them or us. Uh, so one of the, we're, we're also changing virtually. This is a website redesign that we're very close to launching. And uh, John Wilbanks worked a lot on the initial uh, website redesign concepts. And we have uh, John Phillips and his company Fabricators, many of you know John Phillips from past community events, has been doing the implementation. Uh, Tim Vollmer and Jane Clark have been managing that on staff. I see Tim over there, I'm not sure where Jane is, probably doing another job. Um, and you can see one of the features of this redesign. Here on the left, it scales automatically for mobile devices. So before I, I talk about the last three years at all, I wanted to highlight a couple of very recent events and relate them to some of the things that are happening at the summit. We just posted yesterday that there was a, a Creative Commons attribution share alike was enforced in Germany. Uh, it's a very interesting story. And uh, John Weitzman actually translated the decision to English. Find at the bottom of this, this post. It's currently the most recent post on the um, on the CC blog. Um, if you want to find out more details about that, John Weitzman, I'm not sure if he's here right now. Yes, in fact, he's right there with the pink CC sticker. Um, and there's going to be a, a session on enforceability uh, tomorrow as one of the legal sessions. Uh, so if you want to find out more, not necessarily about this case, but about how we have to very carefully craft 4.0 to make sure it's enforceable around the world. Um, another one is that we just announced the retirement of the sampling plus license. Now this is, uh, this story begins a lot longer than three years ago. We had a, we had a niche license that was not interoperable with our other, with our other licenses. A very important community called Freesound uses, used it, uh, and we did not retire it until a few, until last week because we think it's important to work with communities like like Freesound, but I'm really happy that we that we did retire it. It's it's uh, emblematic of one of the I think changes in CC over the years, but has really borne fruit over the last three years, and that's ever focus on interoperability among our own licenses and other tools. And Caroline is looking at me equally, and I realize that is because I'm talking way too fast, so <laughs> I will stop. <coughs> Um, Kathy and Joey spoke about a lot of progress that Creative Commons has made, and I will talk about other progress. But I want, to, I want us to keep in mind the milieu that we exist in, which is almost all not progress. And as an example of that, uh, the European Union just decided to extend copyright retroactively for sound recordings 20 years, uh, which 
somebody estimated it's going to cost the public a billion dollars, but that's probably a massive underestimate uh, of the overall harm that's going to be done. Uh, John Weitzman, again, was the co-author of this dossier on that term extension. Um, and I, I point to that just because I think it's important to remember the environment that we operate in <coughs> is that well, we, we can celebrate our successes um, but the world is not necessarily moving in our direction, and that needs to be considered as we develop strategy and figure out how to, how to move ahead. Um, so what, one, of the, one of the points of this talk was to talk about overall trends in the last three years of the open community, and that's, an, that's a totally impossible task. And I know the free software world really well, so I pulled out seven things that have been happening in the free software world over the last seven years. And uh, I want to talk very briefly about how some of them might inform the free culture and open access, et cetera, communities, because generally the free software community has been ahead of us. So one that you may not have known about is design. Uh, free software is frequently criticized for not being, not being usable, but in fact over the last few years, every major free software project, um, including the content-oriented ones like, or that are supporting content projects like Wikimedia, has undertaken design or designer-led um, uh, user initiative, user experience initiatives. And I'm predicting that was once seen as paradoxical that being open design is gonna be seen as hot in a few years. Um, and the lesson, I want, the lesson I'd like us to think about from that is that um, even things that, that we defend against or are embarrassed to talk about, I think if we focus on them like some like free software people are on design, that uh, will not only be kind of afraid to talk about them anymore, but will that will uh, be celebrating them in a few years. And, and a, an example of that, something that we're afraid, not afraid to talk about uh, externally, that we, we uh, talk about as if it's being used against us is, is quality in a number of ways. And that's in the Wikipedia context and the open education context. But I think we're going to, we're actually going to, like free software is figuring out some, how to make design an advantage. I think we'll figure out ways to leverage peer production to make better quality. Um, and I'm just going to talk about one other of these things in the interest of time. And that is uh, mobile and net services. That, that's something everybody's familiar with, how mobile devices and web applications are taking over the world. That's often characterized as a threat. Uh, to free software because it's a complete game changer that makes some of the free software irrelevant. I point that out because free culture also is also constantly facing those kind of existential threats. Um, the proprietary sector is constantly is constantly innovating, and what looks like forward progress to us doesn't guarantee our long-term success at all. So now I'm going to talk briefly about uh, 10, 10 CC trends in the past 37.5 months. Again, very briefly, um, one is community. We've uh, Affiliates have been mentioned again and again, and many of you are affiliates. I think we actually need to focus on expanding the community even, even more than that. Um, another is convergence across domains. We've uh, been doing a lot in education and science, for example, for a long time, but we're finding more similarities than differences across those and are learning how to leverage the same tools and messages. Uh, data has been a big focus, and there's going to be a session on um, on databases in 4.0 that I encourage you to go to tomorrow. And many of you have been educating on that over the last few years. 
Um, also on the convergence piece, I want to mention, of, of course there are many sessions on public sector information, education, and science. Um, in the short amount of time, I can't really say much about them, but you should go to all of them. Um, interoperability, I, I think, as with, the retiring, as with retiring the sampling plus license, We've uh, kind of changed gradually from being primarily about giving choice to creating an interoperable commons. And retiring niche licenses is part of that, but it's also going to be a big part of 4.0 in that we think about how to either address or leverage remaining incompatible incompatibilities in our license suite, but also how we operate interoperate with other licenses that aren't created by Creative Commons. Policy has been another major focus. Uh, while preparing for this talk, I looked back at the CC blog the first time that public sector information was actually in a blog title. It was, I believe, in 2008, talking about a study that Paul Keller co-authored about the opportunities and the pitfalls of public sector information. And since then, there's been an absolute explosion in uh, in government use uh, and funder mandates, et cetera, at the policy level. And, that, and that's now a major focus of CC uh, that really didn't exist three years ago. Or was it something that people wanted to work on but wasn't real, except maybe in Australia? Um, provenance is another big thing. Um, our, meta, our technology strategy is finally beginning to show some fruit on the broader web um, beyond the simple integrations that were done in, done in Google and Google and Yahoo. We have an initiative called the Learning Resource Metadata Initiative. Um, and I say provenance because I want people to start thinking beyond rights information. Provenance, is, or provenance information is generally useful to readers as well as, as, well as readers. In fact, I'd like to I'd like people to start thinking about intellectual provenance instead of intellectual property. The public domain has been a major focus the last three years. In fact, we've rolled out two public domain tools, uh, CC0 and public domain mark. Diane Peters has really led the work on that. Um, and that's my favorite thing that CC has done in the last, last three years. Um, Public sector information is redundant. I already talked about that. Uh, stewardship is uh, something very relevant to the 4.0 process. We've, I think, begun to come to grips with the fact that Creative Commons licenses are really a global standard that millions of people rely on. And we need to be extremely careful when we create new versions or when we, when we, do, when we do ports, which are effectively new licenses. Um, and we, not, not just for our own licenses, but also when we think about interoperability with, with other licenses, we need to educate the potential creators of new licenses about all that stewardship entails. Because without good stewardship, um, the commons is going, to, is going to fail, or rather won't reach its potential. Uh, finally, strategy. Uh, Kathy and Joey talked a lot about strategy. It's actually something that we've increasingly focused on over the last three years. If you go to wiki.creativecommons.org slash strategy, you'll see some of our previous year's work. Previous year's work. Um, I think this is just a natural outcome of the organization becoming bigger and more mature. And as I believe Kathy was saying, we need to uh, we have a lot of opportunities, so we need to think about resource allocation. Um, and that's something that you all should really uh, give us feedback on and inform. It should be a strategy we all develop. Uh, so finally, uh, this is a segue to Georgos's uh, segment of this, um, and mostly an earlier version of the graph that was in the Power of Open, showing the growth of CC licenses from zero to uh, a little over 400 million in, in eight years. Um, one 
additional data point that's not on here. Uh, Flickr is very, very close to 200 million photos under CC license. I think in the next few days we'll hit 200 million. And there's a blog post, uh, I think from 2004, in which we say that Flickr now is approaching a million, or no, Flickr is approaching a, a, a million licenses, and that'll just be incredible when it gets there. Um, and now we have 100 times that. Um, people are choosing more and more free licenses. You could also see that in meaning less restrictive licenses. They're now reached about 40%. Um, the additional data points on here is the proportion of ported licenses, which peaked around 2008, or 2007 and 2008, and have, has kind of, kind of leveled off since then. And um, as was highlighted before, how porting is stressed in 4.0 is, or how crafting a global license is, is handled in 4.0 will be a major issue today. Um, there's one caveat with the 2010 and 2011 data. It's very uh, reliant on Yahoo, and Yahoo is generally declining. So um, I think it probably, I'm very confident that it understates the growth of CC. Growth of CC. However, uh, Jorgos is going to talk more about the, the data covering the last three years and how CC growth is actually fitting patterns that you see uh, in every sort of product. Uh, thank you. Um, should I also try the same thing or just do it again? Right Give me a second. No? Okay, I think I know what's going on. Uh, <coughs> maybe I don't. Does anybody have any questions while we're trying to get the display to work? So actually, why don't we do the logistics announcements at the end? Okay, so um, this is all very quick. We were just going to do it as people went out into the break. So don't worry, not a lot to be said. Mainly what I'd like to do is draw your attention to how the rest of the day is scheduled. I've already done that. I've already done that partly in my earlier talk. Um, so basically, we have a, we have a 20-minute break after this session. We'll be running a little bit late, but I think we'll keep the break at 20 minutes. We will then break up into the regional meetings. Now, those are mainly intended for discussion among affiliates. We know there are a lot of non-affiliates here. Um, you are obviously free to join in the conversation in a region you're interested in, but check with the regional manager who is running the session how they feel about that. So, ask the permission. <laughs> but other than that, we've, you've got, we've got a session where everybody's broken up. We've got lunch, 
catch back our time up at lunch and we'll come back at 2 o'clock for topic specific sessions. So you can see there's um, sessions discussing the licences, sessions discussing open education and a session discussing um, open archiving and publishing. Um, they are definitely very much open to everybody, so they should be of interest to anybody who is interested in those topics. Um, then the next part, then we have another 20 minute break and we come back for uh, a, a staff board affiliate meeting. Now this is the only part of the entire conference that we're actually going to ask people who aren't formal affiliates or staff or board not to come to. Um, you, will, you can understand why it is that we might like to, we do need a bit of time to be able to talk to our board privately um, <laughs> and ask them you know, all the hard questions that we're all wondering. Um, so basically, if you are not an affiliate, um, the next session is optional for you. Oh, sorry, we, we break up from now on for the rest of the day. I'll nev we'll never see everybody again for today. The next session is optional for you. The session after that is um, completely open to everybody and if you're interested in the subject matter. And then at 4.45, um, non-affiliates will be free to go and have a look at the beautiful old city um, and find some dinner and whatnot. Um, then we have a long break and the evening functions for this evening are once again broken up into um, affiliate staff and boards and then non-affiliates. We apologise again, we promise the rest of the time everybody is welcome at all our events. Um, it's just for tonight, again we wanted to have a real chance for the staff board and affiliates to get down um, and to sit down and talk with each other. So there's uh, dinner, those who um, are coming to that should have the information. If you think you should be coming to that and don't have the information, um, please contact somebody with a blue lanyard and we'll point you in the right direction. Um, for other people, however, we haven't let you off, uh, we haven't left you with nothing to do. There is an excellent um, ex, uh, ex remix um, makerism, <laughs> shareism maker lab um, exhibition on this evening. It's open to everybody. The details of the address are in the program. Um, it starts at 9 p.m. Um, and it will be showing the products of a lab that's been going on for the last three days, where creators and tech people and just anybody who's interested in anything have been coming together and trying to make collaborative works. So that will all be showcased tonight. Um, so that's what to do. That's what you are welcome to do if you are not an affiliate. And if you are an affiliate staff or board member, we have the dinner. And I think that's me for it. But Alan probably has a few. And a few logistics details um, with regard to the rooms in which the meetings will take place, the regional ones, I think they're listed in the hallway by the registration desks. The names of the rooms are on the door, but also when you walk in and you see the color of the wall, you'll know whether it's blue or raspberry, so you should be fine. Um, uh, there is a garden, the weather is changing all the time, but it's not that bad, so during the longer break there's an entry through the blue room, there's a nice little garden where you can sit down and relax. With regard to the vicinity, if you want, first of all, we've marked a few places on the Google map that you have a link to on the summits page, but there's obviously a lot more around. One way to go is to turn left. When you leave the venue, enter the main the so-called theater square where the National Theater is, plenty of bars and restaurants <coughs> around there. Or you can go right and you hit the main, um, it's called the Krakowskie Przedmieście, it's a former royal route. Uh, it's very close to the old city, you go left, you hit the old city, you go right, you can just walk on, go to Nagoya Street and there are plenty of places to go there as well. The last thing is our Wi-Fi connection, I know some of you had problems, it seems that especially Mac OS Lion doesn't know our network, so there is a solution. Um, if you have personal Wi-Fi problems, please contact us. It should be working for most of you. And if you are once in a while dropping, this is due to the fact that we're all in one room, it'll get a lot better once we're spread out um, across the venue. And I think that's it with regard to the very technical things. In general, if you have any sort of problems related to living in Warsaw, like how to get around, where to get tickets, where to get a drink, or where to buy a gift, souvenirs, books, or whatever, please contact one of our Polish staff and we have some help. Thank you. All right, uh, sorry about the mess earlier. I'll take just a few minutes to follow up from what Mike was talking about earlier with respect to Creative Commons, where we are at now, 
and also specifically uh, what we can say today about the growth of Creative Commons. Uh, to give a little bit of background, because some of you have seen my presentations before, some have not. Uh, we've been doing this for a while now. Uh, I've presented similar uh, findings in other uh, Creative Commons summits and other related events, uh, trying to assess the growth of Creative Commons around the world. Um, I'm a professor in Singapore, but uh, I'm also involved with Creative Commons at many different levels, so that's something I sort of like doing. Uh, it's related to my research, but I'm also interested in communicating these results to you and see whether it makes you think in some interesting ways. Oh, this will not work, I'm guessing. Most cumbersome presentation ever. <laughs> you think so? Yes. Okay. My fault again. I feel like all this technology is so new to me. Which part did you press? <laughs> Which everyone? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, and this is different version. So I excuse the fonts and everything. So, um, like Kathy said earlier, the question, fundamental question here is how do we measure the success of Creative Commons? I think there's many ways we could measure it. One way we have been doing it because it was relatively convenient was by trying to see how many people are adopting Creative Commons licenses, where in the world they are doing that, perhaps how quickly they are doing that. Is there a strong and quick take-up of Creative Commons licenses around the world, or isn't there? And what kind of trends can we see? Now the problem is, just about anyone from individuals to institutions can start using Creative Commons around the world. We don't have one way of tracking that. There is no central repository for that. How do we track something that is evolving on the global, world wide web? How can we measure it? The short answer is we don't. We cannot. It's beyond the means of most of us. Actually, pretty much as a society, we have sort of delegated that task to private enterprise. We have delegated that task to Yahoo, to Google, to Microsoft, and others. There have been some efforts to create open search engines and open indexes of the web, but to my knowledge, they haven't gone as far as we have hoped. That means we depend on third parties and third party data to sort of get, get, a, get a feel for uh, where people are using Creative Commons and how many perhaps are using Creative Commons. Uh, I have shown in the past sometimes country pictures comparing different countries and different regions. I am not going to do that now, whoever is interested, I think I have some more information uh, on my laptop, but I'm going to show you some work that a, a student did under my supervision looking at the total growth of Creative Commons. And again here, the intention is not to say there is currently uh, 200 million, 400 million, maybe 500 million licenses, uh, items licensed under Creative Commons. The intent is more to look at the pattern of growth. See whether it's growing exponentially, whether it's going down, or what else it is doing. Now this data, for those who are not familiar with this from previous presentations, is based on data from Yahoo. We have been looking at Google data and several other sources of data, and there is a whole lengthy process whereby this data is collected, compiled, and then put into graphs and so on for analysis. Um, this represents the six major licenses of Creative Commons globally, that means this includes all the local jurisdiction versions and so on, except by SA. Why do I put by SA separately? 
because I just wanted to show you how you can see also Wikipedia's adoption of BIOSA reflected on this data since this was a major event. Now, uh, the, the data is messy. This is raw data. There is some missing data here and there. There is some issues with it. Now you can see that you can sort of fit an exponential growth line. So the real data is the blue dots. Green is an attempt to fit a mathematical equation through that and say, OK, is it exponential? It should go like that, right? How close does this data look to the green line? It's relatively close. So we could say that Creative Commons seems to be growing exponentially, which means that the growth rate keeps increasing, which everybody would agree is a good thing. Now, however, it is not quite exponential. It is not quite growing like that. And if you actually try to fit or ask a program, a specialized software to do that for you and try to fit an exponential curve through the data, you will find that it is actually not so easy. The results are not so satisfactory. The growth for quite a while over here, you could say has been sort of linear, kind of a straight line. And more recently, it looks like maybe it's curving the other way. Now, this is the same data with a different curve fitting it. Now, this is a different way of trying to describe this. Is it maybe behaving like the green line suggests here? Is this maybe the trend? A trend of accelerating growth, but then slowly decelerating growth. And you can see also visually, right, that this does seem to fit the data better. And also mathematically it can be calculated that it actually does fit the data much better. So it does look like we have a case of decelerating growth. Now there's many caveats attached to that. This is Yahoo data, primarily, not entirely, it's entirely Yahoo data. And though we need to cross-validate that with whatever other data sources we have, we know that Yahoo has been through some troubles, which have intensified lately, and it is possible that those have influenced the search operations as well. There have been many announcements about their search operations and how they will be supported by Microsoft and so on. Uh, but we can see that relatively early, actually even before, this is the latest data is from early 2011, early this year, even before that, uh, there are some signs of slowdown. Let me continue for a second. Now this is by SA, aggregated, all the by SA licenses. Uh, again, I don't want you to pay so much attention to the y-axis because we use different ways of estimating the total volume, which is not reflected here. And also because this was done by a Vietnamese student and apparently there are special words in Vietnamese, I think also in Chinese, for not only thousands and millions, but also for 10,000, 100,000 and so on. And so she made a mistake actually. She's made the scale, you have to multiply everything by 10,000. Which I always find difficult to wrap my head around, but she, she finds it natural. Um, I'm look, I want you to focus more on the patterns of growth and their change. So what you notice here in the case of BISA is that really around, sorry, I'm moving around a lot, around the time of the adoption, of Creative Commons as a licensing model by Wikipedia, we see a very steep growth of by SA. And it's really exactly around the time when Wikipedia started implementing Creative Commons. So we can actually capture some of that on the data. Some of it we know we cannot anyway, and that's a longer discussion, which we can have in a different panel, the research panel that is planned for tomorrow. But again, if you try to ambitiously 
like, like everybody does on the internet, try to fit an exponential curve over everything, you will see that it doesn't quite fit the data well. And I don't need to tell you that this one also would fit much better an S curve, as it is called. A curve that is shaped like an S, which actually inversely like that for you, which starts slow, picks up speed, then starts slowing down again. Now this is the grand total, so to say, but for the six major licenses again. So this does not include other types of licenses like public domain uh, dedication. It would not include CC0. It wouldn't include all sorts of other licenses. This is the six major ones. Um, this is again data that has some issues with it. And you can see that sometimes it really goes way up here, way down there. But this is for pretty much the history of the whole data that we have from 2000 uh, around 2003-2004 until early 2011 and the student who was working with me tried to fit all sorts of different growth models to this uh, means different mathematical equations which can be used to predict the growth of plants the growth of populations the growth of uh, product adoption uh, the growth of ideas pretty much anything you can think of, right? And this is the best fitting model that we could find which as closely as possible fits the data. It is actually the very much, it's the same model that some other researchers found fits also the growth of Wikipedia. Maybe by coincidence. But similarly to Wikipedia, what this suggests I don't know if you know about Wikipedia, but it has been slowing down, the growth of Wikipedia. This also suggests a slowdown in the adoption of Creative Commons. Now, this is interesting if you think about it, because this data can be influenced by Yahoo's misfortunes, we do not know. And we could be wrong in many ways. It is the nature of looking at the time series that it could surprise you. Like when looking at the stock market and you expect that now it's falling, suddenly it starts increasing again. And then you're like, oh, we were wrong. Maybe actually the market's going up again. But what if we assume that Creative Commons growth, at least in these six major license groups, is actually decreasing the growth? That is not surprising. If you are familiar or have even just heard about any kind of mention of adoption of products, any product from your favorite gadgets to any other product, there is a typical adoption curve where people will start get knowing about the product, then it will start pick up sales, then at some point enough people will know about it, it will really boom. And then after a while, most people who care about it have bought it. And maybe some are still undecisive about whether they should buy it or not. But at some point, the sales saturate. So if you for a moment think about Creative Commons as a product, it is natural that at some point we are going to reach some saturation, a slowdown. Because it becomes mature. Okay. And most people who were likely to be early adopters have already adopted it. Now, if we assume that now as an exercise that we are close to reaching a saturation point, and I showed you some evidence that maybe we are, the question is how do we get then to the next growth curve? If you think about it in terms of marketing again, the next growth could be the next products that, or services that Creative Commons should offer, which it, is maybe, which it is maybe currently not offering, or the markets which it is currently not targeting and hasn't managed to open up as well as it could. Where should the focus be in order to continue or create a new cycle of growth? And also, should we be measuring success in growth numbers alone, and what are other metrics of success? 
and impact. Because just people adopting the licenses is not necessarily the best measure to begin with. So, these are my parting thoughts. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to take them later. Okay, we have one question that we can take. I'm interested if, uh, if you're measuring the number of domains which were accepted. A number of domains, new domains. So, on how many domains people were accepting, uh, implementing the CC licenses? Uh, you want to explain the numbers? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, of course. <coughs> Because there is a volume of a number of like works, so like of course if, if you can explain also numbers that would be great. But I'm I'm also interested in how many web domains actually accepted and two time. Okay, we uh, you cannot say that. Uh, you cannot see that here. Uh, the question was about different domains and different networks, and whether we can see actually. Uh, this usage, whether it comes from different domains, uh, as I understand it. Uh, we cannot see that in this data. I didn't explain so much where it, how exactly this is constructed. Uh, I will say just very simply, this is basically us asking Yahoo how many pages link to the Creative Commons deed page. The deed page, right? How many pages link to each one for every version, for every license, for every jurisdiction? So it's Yahoo's estimate of how many pages in its entire index link to those. Because usually when you link to a deed page, you link that to indicate that something is licensed under that license. And that gives us an approximation, gives us something we can work with. Um, but it's fairly maybe rudimentary in that way. Okay, one more question if we have one. Come on. Uh, I'm Tomo from Creative Culture Japan. Um, I was just wondering, did you uh, ever so think about um, comparing those figures with other uh, types of content in their either you know a subset of Creative Commons works, say number of photos on Flickr indexed by Yahoo, or uh, some other non-CC contents, just to compare how Yahoo's overall indexing activities are moving. Okay, um, uh, I try to make this. <coughs> I try to make this way. So, uh, with respect to Yahoo, um, you're right. We should have maybe been collecting some data on maybe completely irrelevant queries on Yahoo to just see how that compares to that. We haven't been doing that. Uh, Mike uh, and I haven't checked the latest Flickr data. Mike here has been telling me, has been suggesting that. Flickr's growth has been slowing down anyway. Maybe. That's, that's the, the number of CC licenses is continuing to grow, but many, many other uh, photo platforms are growing much faster, and some of them have CC licenses enabled, so we, we need to get additional data sources as we as short. Right, so I, I, think, I think the question was more about comparing CC growth to overall growth of media on the internet, and we don't have good numbers on that, that, that would be an interesting, um, that, that's something that we should do. We, we do know that on Flickr, for example, CC licenses are only something like 2% of the total um, works on Flickr, and I think that's been fairly consistent over the years. Um, that's both, uh, so that 200 billion number is both depressing, but also very exciting, as I said, tremendous comments people build on, but also shows how, you know, you know, just what the barriers are for a voluntary mechanism like the Creative Commons. 
and you know, frankly, it's one of the reasons it's important to also pursue policy avenues. I just wanted to add a comment that um, I agree, I guess, Marcel's question is leading to that, that we should look at other metrics, but the problem is that the one, the one we chose for now is in, in numbers the best one. If you count the maze, there will be less of them than pages. If you try to look at Flickr users, there will be fewer of them than photos. So we are a bit, to be honest, hostages of our current statistics because, you know, if you start saying we had 400 million and the new number is million, but this is users and not pages, um, this won't work as a sort of PR strategy for a social media. But nevertheless, I think we really have to move on to these other metrics. Um, clicks on the need sites instead of the links to them. Users of the CC license chooser, things like that. Maybe if we look at growth instead of like the, the numbers, we can look at that. <coughs> Yeah, so I agree that it's not conclusive and, and this is exactly the kind of data that we want to look at, you know, to try to get a better picture. And we're already doing some of that. Uh, it, it will never be clear and we will never be entirely sure whether we are reaching some sort of saturation point or not. But why I think this is interesting and why I think there is some value in this is that, okay, the data may be suggesting that no data is perfect, but we know from experience and from work that is done in many different disciplines, in marketing, but also in other disciplines, that every growth reaches a saturation point. And if we are at such a point now, or coming closer to it, what would be the next 10 years also, like Kathy said, what would be the strategy there for growth? Can it be just the same as it has been? Or do we need to start thinking about a different role that a more mature Creative Commons needs to be playing? And that's not easy, and I don't think there is an easy answer to that. Uh, but I think we are probably at the stage where we should be thinking about that. And I think the data, for better or worse, supports this idea that we need to think about that. Uh, thanks, everybody. I encourage you all to come to the research session. And also, if you, I, we barely got to talk about um, changes in other open movements, which was in the in the title. But we're I, I want to promote a session that's right after the research session about CC CC's role in the global movement. So if you're interested in things beyond CC, there's a little bit of the iComments summit in that session.